Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to go on a very different kind of trip. I'm going to be kayaking over to Stiltsville, south of Key Biscayne, in the middle of the Biscayne Bay. So I'm really excited about this. Uh, let me show you the equipment that I'm going to be taking today. So we've got a camelback with three liters of water, hat, gloves, bathing suit, long sleeve shirt, small towel, two water bottles, uh, cell phone and case, uh, toilet paper in case I want to do some paper mache, a watch, multi-tool, steel and flint, headlamp, knife, and a pole with a flag and a light on it. I've also got a double paddle and an emergency single paddle as well as an anchor and rope downstairs, the kayak. Oh, and also a compass, which is pretty invaluable. So let's get going. I would like to introduce everybody to Candela. She is my 10 foot long kayak. Um, built far more for stability and maneuverability than say long distance travel in the ocean. But I'm told she has an excellent engine. So we're actually gonna do about an eight and a half mile trip today. I'm really looking forward to it. And that's what she looks like when she's ready to go. As a Cuban American, there are a few things that I hate more than racist jokes about paddling or swimming. The irony of that being that I'm actually a pretty decent paddler and swimmer. So to all those bigots out there, I guess you can have that one. I hope you're happy. here off to our left that the water is just about crystal clear. That is a good sign of a healthy seagrass ecosystem. Uh, you see that all that manatee and turtle grass holds down the sand when you have a sick or dying bed the uh, grass will die off and then the water will get much more cloudy which you've seen inside of Biscayne Bay a whole lot. You see big, big die-offs of uh, all the seagrass. And of course, along with that, you get a die-off of all of the marine animals that depend upon that for their, well, for everything. Luckily though, uh, Key Biscayne, at least on the Atlantic side, is pretty healthy when it comes to its seagrass. Coming up on the Key Biscayne Lighthouse, the first lighthouse was built in the very beginning of the 19th century and was the first permanent structure on the island inhabited by lighthouse keeper a couple of servants and the guy's family uh, a few years later the original structure was burnt down during the seminal wars and uh, it was abandoned for several decades until they came back and actually rebuilt it so its current height of about 110 feet. In the, I think it was in the early 20th century, it was automated, and then it was eventually it was decommissioned. And they built a new lighthouse around the mid 20th century, way out over there, about seven miles offshore, on a reef called Fowey Rocks. And one day I'm gonna paddle out there. It's about seven miles out. But that's not today. Meanwhile, directly to our south, there's like a little blip way down there. It looks kind of like a cloud on the horizon. And that is Soldier Key. That's the first true key in uh, the Florida Keys. I paddled out there. It was a, <laughs> a hell of a trip, very long one. And maybe that'll be a, a video for another day as well. Being past the lighthouse, we're entering Cape Florida. This is the southernmost end of Key Biscayne. And we're getting our first look of Stiltsville out there. You gotta be really careful when you're coming out here to time the tides right because basically Stiltsville is located on a big, big sandbar called the safety valve that forms 
the eastern edge of Biscayne Bay. And there's kind of this gap between it and Key Biscayne. When the tides come in and out, all that water being squeezed into such a small area just creates one hell of a riptide. And I've timed it incorrectly before. And I was just struggling, just inching along, paddling as hard as I could. There's a very real danger that, again, if you time it wrong, you could be swept off into the Atlantic or into Biscayne Bay. Getting a little more choppy now. We've got two currents, the longshore current and the riptide interacting with each other. And that's creating all this a little static here. This could be way more serious when the, uh, the wind's up and uh, the sea's not on your side, but today, very mild. Shouldn't cause any problems. There's a thunderstorm off to our west, rolling over Coconut Grove. Came by here maybe about an hour ago. There's an easterly wind right now, so it should just keep pushing off into the Everglades. Shouldn't have to worry about it either. Stiltsville was a community built on pilings in the middle of Biscayne Bay. The first shacks and houses that were built out here were first constructed in the 1920s and 30s. And eventually, you had between 30 and 40 different structures out here with permanent residents. Now, over the years, many of those houses were burnt down or destroyed by hurricanes, but Stoltzville has a very storied history intricately tied to the general history of Miami. So during the Prohibition, people would come out here and drink Cuban rum to their heart's content. There was all sorts of revelry and debauchery going on. Uh, and there were several clubs that were built out here, legal and illegal. And uh, eventually, you know, the, the number of disasters that hit the area started to take its toll, so all these houses started getting destroyed. But even into the 1990s, there was a size of, you know, there were still people living out here. But then Hurricane Andrew hit in 92, and the county took over and basically uh, put all these structures under its control. And, uh, you know, there's still, you can still come out here, they maintain them. They've actually done a pretty good job of weatherproofing them. Uh, it's, it's hard to come out here unless you have a boat or in my case, a kayak. But, you know, they'll open up the houses every now and then, you'll be able to go inside and see what they look like. And there's actually one house that you can still rent with friends and uh, spend a couple days there. Actually, uh, inadvertently, walked into <laughs> that house when it was being occupied by other guests. And uh, let me tell you, it has the most spectacular shower you've ever seen, because it looks right out onto the Atlantic Ocean. It is phenomenal. The sun's coming out. As you can see, we're traveling over just a plate-like surface of the ocean. And just a few feet beneath us is the seabed is just <laughs> gorgeous. There's nothing like this. We have just arrived to the A-frame house, the first of seven remaining structures in Stillsville. It's so called because of the A-frame construction used to build it. And there you see the main structure. Unsurprisingly, it's uh, battened down. And over here is what used to be the outhouse. It's got a little dock on the other side where boats will 
tie up on the weekend. People hang out here on the, uh... oh, what do we have over here? That's probably a cormorant looking for some meal. But people will hang out here and uh, it smells very strongly of cormorant shit because the cormorants, when the people are gone, also like to hang out here and take big old poops all over the place. This is the Leeshaw house. It is the most easterly of all of the remaining Stiltsville houses. As you can see, it's got its dock directly under the structure. The cool thing is all these stencils somebody painted onto the columns here. And it's a little worse for wear. It's missing some tiles. I'm sure that'll be fixed, or I hope it will sometime soon. And also smells very strongly of bird shit. Just a few hundred meters from Leeshaw is the Baldwin House. As you can see, it's a little bit of a Frankenstein creation. You've got the original structure built here on the concrete pylons, and then added to it were these kind of just, I don't know, aluminum, well, additions. I can tell you it's very nice inside. And you can rent it out occasionally. And uh, there is that bathroom window that I told you about. It's just like the most amazing view. Should you want to take a shower there? And if you have the chance, I highly recommend it. Here we have the Hicks house. Uh, pretty similar construction to the other ones. You got the dock underneath, got the structure on top. Yeah. Not really too much distinguishing it from the other ones. Fortunately, I don't know the history of this house very well, so I can't really tell you when it was built or what happened here. But it's a nice enough house. I'll t I would definitely take it. I want to talk a little bit more about the safety valve, which, as I said, is a series of sandbars and uh, other formations that lead from Key Biscayne all the way down to the Florida Keys. They serve, or it serves, a very important purpose. You can see how shallow this water is. Maybe foot, foot and a half tops, and that's at high tide. So what it does is it kind of serves as a gigantic breakwater for South Florida. When these big hurricanes come ripping through here, these big tropical storms or just regular seasonal thunderstorms, the waves crest on this very shallow sandbar rather than hitting the mainland directly with its full force. So if it weren't for this, Miami would be way worse for wear. Up ahead is the Miami Springs Boat Club. It is the southernmost of all the remaining houses, and it is still in private use, private hands. If you get too close to them, they'll start yelling at you that uh, you can't come onto private property because, well, you never know who might be a pirate. But I love the story of this house because basically a bunch of working stiffs got together and bought a sunken barge for one dollar. Then floated it over here and built this house out of it and when it got destroyed by a hurricane they just built it up again but this is about as far as it gets on our little tour over here to our southeast is soldier key first of the true keys and almost due east is foey rocks i'm gonna turn around Give you guys a little view of Matson Hammock, Coconut Grove, and over there, downtown Miami, hell of a skyline. We are about two miles 
from close to Key Biscayne, six or seven miles from mainland Florida. And there's nothing quite like knowing that you're the only person around for, well, <laughs> I guess except for the boat over there. One of very few people around for miles. It's a sense of, I don't know, sense of calm. Knowing that, you know, you're away from everything. And all you got out here is you, your boat, and your paddle. Though I can also see how that might induce a little bit of panic in some people. Here we have the regally christened Bay Chateau. And in attendance are a whole bunch of cormorants just hanging out and looking off in different directions. Um, it's not exactly what I think when I uh, hear about uh, royal residence, but who am I to quibble? about nomenclature. There they go. So the tide has reversed and is now going out into the Atlantic. And it looks like I've timed it correctly. So it should whip me around Cape Florida and back home. But before then, we've got one more stop. And we are rounding out our tour of Stiltsville, quite suitably, with the Jimmy Ellingberg House. Now, Jimmy was known as the informal mayor of Stiltsville, and he used to throw some of the most famous parties out here. So he'd have uh, politicians and celebrities and all manner of folk just partying through the entire night here at his house. And luckily, the structure has survived to the current day. And off there to the left, you can see currently populating the house, a small brood of Miami douchebags. Now, you can always tell when you're around a Miami douchebag by their general lack of voice control and talking about more or less nothing but fishing and sports and all the hot chicks they bang. But they're all over the place. And it's no surprise that they're here as well. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys a quick pan of the entire seven structures here on Stiltsville. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and share with your friends. See you later.